Our project this week is going to be the pot holder loom. And this is it here. These little pegs here will be holding loops that we will be weaving over, under, over, under, like we've done with the cork trivet. This time we're going to have a whole lot more elements. Remember, I don't know if you know yet, but these things, if they're going up and down and being parallel up and down, we're calling those warp threads. And we're going to load up the loom with the loops, making sure that everybody, every peg gets occupied with a loop. I want to be careful that something like this doesn't happen. It's a little subtle, but this is going to be a problem. This peg here got missed. We want every single peg to be occupied. doesn't matter what color you put next to another unless you have a plan and you have say the dark ones going this way and then the light ones going that way. I have seen some of the prettiest pot holders come out of this unit. So this is just getting the loom ready to go. Making sure that I catch every peg Ho, 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 did you catch me? Were you watching? I had a problem, I skipped a peg. Let's put that one back here. It's good to keep an eye on your teacher because it's so much fun when you get to point out, say, Ms. Marilyn, you missed one. I will be counting on you to make sure that I catch every peg for the rest of this. I've got one that's pretty bright and white over here, so I'd like to kind of balance it by putting another white one in there. And probably I'll put like one white one going here and maybe over here as well. Although I'm trying to make this just kind of a random color scheme. And here is the last peg. Some of them you have to pull pretty hard on to get over that last peg but they will fit because this is a this is a company that I use called Harrisville looms and they make some really nice loops to go on these They're, they should all of them fit now just because it's easier for me to to go this way I'm going to turn it and I'm going to put my other elements in in this orientation but I can't just do that tell me why not because there's no interlacement happening here. I have to interlace. Well, it's kind, of, it's kind of interesting to get these things interlaced. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to start in the middle, and I'm going to interlace like that. That was num So here we've gone over, and then we've got under the purple. We'll go over the pink. We'll go under the white, we'll go over the yellow, under the green, you see what I'm doing. Every other loop, I am telling this is the way it's going to be done, over him, under the pink. And like I say, you keep an eye on Ms. Marilyn and make sure that she doesn't get somebody out of turn. Over the white one, under the pink one, over the gold, goldenrod, under the blue, over the pink. And then I can put him on his peg. Let's make sure I get the right peg. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight free pegs before we see the loop. I'm going to do the next one now, but I have to do the exact opposite of what I did here. So here comes my purple. Since the first one went under the orange, this time, I'm sorry, it went under, over the orange, now it needs to go under the orange, like that. And the pink. And do you see here, it's doing the opposite of what the first loop did.
So that's one way you can do it. Just remove the loops and replace the loops and keep pushing them together, beating them together. That's what we weavers say is beating the threads together like this so that they lay really close. You know what? Let's let him hang out there and then I don't have to keep pulling on him. So I want to have the white one come over. I want to have the golden rod come over. I want to have the hot pink come over. And the last one is already right. I can take my fingers and beat those two together like this. Now there is another way you can do this. It's a little bit more fiddly, but I'll show it to you. And that is insert the hook where it needs to go and then pull the loop through in one fell swoop. So the next one I'll need to go under to be the opposite of the one next to him. And you can check and see which one you like best, or you can use the hook to pull it halfway through and then reorient and pull, the, pull it through the other way. Yeah, actually, you know what? Let's do that because that's going to be best. I'm starting to have a little bit of difficulty here, so I'm going to get the loop this far. Stick him on there like that. Beat him in place. And now I need to go get him from the other side. Under the purple, over the pink, under the white, over the yellow, under the green, over the blue, and now I can grab him. And I have to turn the head of the hook sideways so that he can come underneath of those without getting caught. And onto the peg that way. Beat in place with my fingers. And I have the beginning of cloth right there. I'm going to continue along filling up each of these. But I want to show you what a mistake looks like. So let's say... This one I'm going to do the easy way. I'm going to just remove the, the, the pegs and not need to fight with the hook. Let's say I did this. And I was weaving blithely along. Do you see a problem here? These are doing nice interlacement and suddenly the green is right next to the white in the same path. He needs to be in the opposite path. So if the white is correct, and I'll check, it goes over, under, 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 over, under. Then the problem is probably in the green. Let's take a look. Here it needs to be under, over, under, over, uh, whoa. it needs to be under here, and it's not. It's over the white one and the yellow one, and that's where I made my mistake. So I don't have to take the whole thing out, I just have to pull it out until I get to the mistake area, slip him underneath of the yellow one, and now I'm better off. Here, you go all the way over there. Blue needs to come over him. Teal needs to come over him. Yellow needs to come over him. Blue is right. White needs to come over him. Marigold needs to come over him. Pink needs to come over him. And he's over top of teal, so that is good. Again, I'm going to beat him into place. And this is really cool to start to see what it's going to look like in the end. It feels really good there under my fingernails. Once you've got a little bit of cloth in the center and you're having less space to fiddle with out here, less uh, ability to get under and over and under over without the things coming off the pegs, a good way to do it is the following. I'm going to, it needs to go under this, the first one. I'm going to just do one stitch at a time. So let's see, it needs to go under the blue one. Grab him and pull him under. 
You just need to make sure that he, he lays well in there once you've got him in there. It needs to go under the peach. Maybe I can grab both of them here and get him under. It needs to go under the blue. Lay flat now, though. Lay flat now, though. He needs to go under the hot pink. So this you can do with less space to work with. When it starts to get to be tight going, this is probably the way you'll want to go. Under the green. Make sure he's laying well. Under the white. Over the pink, under the purple. And over the orange and onto his pig. Every time you pass something, it's going to be important to beat it in with your fingers, maybe from both sides. Make sure that it looks nice and even. You can even beat a little bit here on the original warps. To beat it in towards the center so that we have loops out here we can work with when we're finishing it off. So I'll continue working on this so that you don't need to watch every single pass. And in the end, I will show you how to take it off the loom. Once we get to a position where we have just one more to do, you definitely want to place it on by removing the pegs. So there is my, there is where it's going to be. I'm going to flip off the pink, get it under the green. And it's a little bit fiddly here. If your hands are strong, you'll be better off. You'll notice it's best if I can stabilize the marigold here with this pinch. I'm also pressing from the other side so that when I flip that off, it doesn't go flying away from me. Get that up over the green and back on. Now I want to work the white. I'll pinch that, flip that off. This might be a little challenging for smaller hands. You can always use the hook as a tool. Flip that under the green. Maybe even poke it up from underneath. I'm almost going to have to do that here. Just support it here with the finger on the other side. And get it up there. Hard to do this and keep it where you can see it with the camera. Because I want to I want to brace it against my belly. But the most important thing is that you can see it, so I will not brace it against my belly. Here, and I'm over to a side where I can reach it with my hand. Get the pink up over top. This is fine over the purple, and then it needs to go, the orange needs to go up on top. And I managed it without losing too many pegs. There we go. Like always, I'm going to beat it into place with my little fingers. And since everyone is in place now, I'm going to do that on all four sides. If you've got some space here in the middle, you can even kind of encourage things closer together here if you need to make more space for the loops around the outside. Because now, once everything is woven, we have to finish off by pulling the loops one through the other. And it's nice if they have a little bit of space to work with and you're not right up next to the pegs with your last weft pass. So here we are. Now my handy dandy cameraman has rearranged the cameras so that I can brace it against my belly and you can still see. So we're going to have a hanging hook up here in the end and because it's going to be here that we want the hook for hanging, this orange one is the one that we'll start working with first. Just to the left of where we want the actual hanging hanger to be. So we'll get it down here. And I'm going to take off the first loop and put it on my hook. 
but I can't do anything with just one loop. I got to have two loops in order to be able to do something. So I will also grab the other hook, the purple one next to it. Now I can take the purple one in the hook. See, I grab it like that and I bring it through and now I just have one on the hook. I can't do anything with one. I got to have two. So I'm going to go grab another one, pull it off its loop, its peg. And then I can pull the pink through the purple. Notice how I'm turning that hook to get it through that little place I can slip the hook through. Now I've got one. Can't do anything with one. Got to go get another. And once I have two, I can take the stitch. Grab the yellow one twisting that hook head around, wiggle, 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 till I get through it. If I have one, I can't do a thing. I got to have two. You can hear when I pull it off the peg, how it does, a, it does a little twang. That's because these things are under quite a bit of tension. If ever I'm feeling that I don't have enough space to work in here, it's always okay to Press that last one down a little bit and give yourself some more space. Give it a tug and you'll get the space you need. And hook that through. And hook that through. Once we get up to the corner, I'll show you a trick that will make this a lot more pleasant. And off and hook it through. Notice how my other hand is kind of stabilizing the whole thing. Whoops, off the peg before you pull it through, Ms. Marilyn. And here we are at the corner. And there. Now, this has come in quite a bit because, like I say, this is under tension. And so as we go around, it's going to shrink just because of physics. If we let it shrink, this last thing is going to be very difficult to control unless there's some tension holding it in place. So I'm going to grab one of these loops. Hang out there. I'm going to grab one of these loops and return it to its peg. Now that looks like it's distorting, but don't worry, in the end it won't look distorted, it will fix itself just fine. Now I'm back here on the working loop. We'll bring this down here and continue what I was doing before. We will want to do one stabilizing loop onto a peg on each side, on three sides, so that that fourth side will behave itself while we're crocheting off the fourth side. You'll notice that I'm always grabbing the second side of the loop. That's just to keep things consistent. And things are starting to get a little wonky here because of the shrinkage, so I'm going to have to hit off the peg before you crochet, off the peg before you crochet. If one of these were to jump off the peg and just be hanging there, the first thing I'm going to do is not panic. And then I'm just going to go get it and continue on. All right, I'm, I found last time that I really did need the hook to get that on here. So what I'm going to do is pull that out so that it's not going anywhere. See how stable that is? No panic. And then back here, I will grab one of the loops and force him to stay in place. I know it looks bad. Don't worry. It won't look bad in the end. Then I'm going to go grab this loop and continue. Just the purple, just the teal one, please, and around. It's okay to use your fingers to help it over, especially here as you get near the end and you start to see the light at the end of the tunnel. I'm stabilizing it with my hand and holding it against my belly to keep it from going sprawling. 
Spraying is a sad sound when you're working on a project. This third side will also need to stabilize. Off the peg before you crochet. Come off. Thank you. And I'll give this one a good strong pull. And he will hang out without any complaining. Then I go get a loop and hang it on a peg and go back for the final run. Same as before, around we go. Those pegs that look like they're distorted and they look like, oh no, I've ruined my project because now it's all wonky. Well, don't worry, these pot holders really like to get back into their balanced weave situation and any sort of pulled loop, any wonkiness that's going on, they're more than happy to heal themselves once they're no longer under tension. You'll notice here that I am holding this thing pretty steady with my left hand, wanting to give it lots of stability there while I'm taking the loops off the pegs. I'm building muscle too, so it's all good. I mean, why, why do you need a gym membership, you know? If you can do folk art, you'll get strong. Here I am at the very end, grabbing the last one and pulling it through. All right, then I release, release, and release, and phew. Now this one I'll want to give a good strong tug to because that's what's going to be the that's what it's going to, um, I'm going to hang it up on a hook in my kitchen. So these guys, like I promised, are not going to look distorted in the end. And there is my finished pot holder ready to hang up in my kitchen and let everybody know I made that myself.